India. We have the that hunchback was... from Notre Dame. Babe, that really suits you. <laughs> okay, we're not trying to have a go at anybody like like 80. Just who has got this issue, but we're trying to highlight what we're referring to. There's a lot of different terms for this condition. Dowing is hump is the correct term for it. Buffalo hump is rude. Uh, excessive kyphosis <laughs> is also accurate. Um, no one knows what as that means. is proximal cross syndrome. But particularly, we are referring to this lumpy part of the back in the thoracic spine here. So we're going to let people. We'll spend a little Can't bit of time. My pimple. Being a bit. <laughs> let me pop that for you. If only it was that simple. Um, there's quite a few people that are really keen to catch us on this live today talking about this particular topic. So we're just going to allow people to sort of gather because I think I might have gone yeah, a little bit pass. early. No, it's 8 o'clock now. This is excellent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is how big my wife eye. is. Yeah, that's it. She's tough. <laughs> tough. Oh, I need some car fix now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> on your delicate shoulders. So we're, what we're talking about is a particular uh, postural issue that can create some pretty significant degenerative changes. So we're going to talk about those. My wife has developed a pillow, <laughs> not any other type of condition. So we're referring to, actually, get me gear off, babe. Get me gear off. I love being able to ask her to get me gear see my off. cupping. Oh, yeah. Cupping <laughs> marks from the other day. All right, I've got it. Excellent. I've got it, beautiful. Thank you. All right, so we are referring to the thoracic spine. Here's your cervical spine up here, your neck. From about your shoulders down to where your the small of your back starts is your thoracic spine. So we are referring to this area here. Predominantly, it's noticeable right at the top of that thoracic kyphotic curve. So from the side, you can see that M has a curve like this at the top of her neck. That is known as a lordotic curve, as is the one down in your lumbar lordosis, as you've possibly heard before. So these two curves mimic each other. But the middle curve of your back for the thoracic spine is a kyphotic curve. It's the opposite. It's normal for us to have a kyphosis. If we have an excessive kyphosis, that's when we've got that excessive bend that we're referring to today. So that's what we're wanting to talk about when you've got an excessive curve. Before I forget, because we're going to focus heavily on this, I want to let you know that if you have an excessive curve in your lower back, nature would have it that you will develop an excessive compens compensatory curve in your thoracic spine because ideally what our body's always trying to do is keep our eyes level with the horizon. So if you can imagine M's got a really big excessive curve in her back and it's throwing her backwards, her eyes would look up to the sky. So to rectify that, her body will correct that by causing this thoracic area to become excessively kyphosed to be able to allow her eyes to look level to the horizon. So we are talking about how to rectify this postural imbalance here, which we're gonna tell you all about it in a moment. But please be mindful that if you've got an excessive curve, you need to go back and look at our video that we did last week on how you can rectify this because there's a similar postural imbalance that takes place up here, what we're gonna talk about tonight in comparison to what happens down here. So you need to go back and have a look at that. If you take a look at yourself from the side and you can see you've got an excessive curve in your lumbar spine as well, please go and rectify that as well because you can't rectify this solely because if we start to, start to straighten this curve when this one is too great, you're going to end up looking down like that. And of course, your body doesn't want to do that. So it will develop that curve back again. Okay, so that's really important. Now, M will be getting rubbed with ChiroFix at the end of this because I just shoved her neck into a whiplash orientation please don't please don't dob me in domestic violence okay so let's talk about this particular problem the most important thing for you to understand is that there are a number of different causes for this problem so we've spoken about one excessive curve in your lumbar spine can create a compensatory curve, curve up here so we've got to make sure that this isn't an issue we've addressed that in a previous video so jump onto that one if you haven't seen it already and if you haven't why not <laughs> There's lots of people on saying hi. Shell saying hi. Hi there. Jody says it makes sense. Excellent. There's a bunch of people I said, please say hi to me tonight. And I've been so busy crapping on that I haven't seen all the names flicking up. So apologies if you've said hi. Hi. Hello to everybody that's on. All right. In case you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Kez, doctor of chiropractic. I've been a chiropractor for 20 years. I don't often say that I'm there because I forget so I'm too busy crapping on. And this is my awesome, beautiful wife. He was mad into nutrition and physical health, as you can see. But I just say pizza. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> 
We just had a, a sneaky anniversary <laughs> quick before the kids get back. Uh, meal out. Shh, don't tell anybody. I haven't okay. had pizza for about a year. I'm just saying. It was gluten free. <laughs> it didn't no have cheese. any cheese on it. <laughs> it was just vegetables on it. Anyway, let's talk about this area area up here. Okay, so what we need to focus on now is why this condition occurs. So one reason can be an excessive curve in your lumbar spine. If you've got an issue with calcium, osteoporosis in your bones, you can find that this area here, taking a lot of pressure from your superincumbent weight, which is anything above the area that we're talking about, brain, head, with them, huge, because you've got a lot of brain, so therefore it's quite heavy. So what happens there if you've got an osteoporotic issue, with, which means not enough calcium in your bones, your bones become soft. And as a result, if you end up with, with this, this curve for a long time, the bones can actually compress slightly and can create an angulation where the back of the vertebra are higher and the front of the vertebra is lower because it's being compressed down like this. And that can be a semi-permanent change. Don't get me wrong, if that is the case, we can sh still rectify some things with your posture, but know that there is a physical change in that regard as well. So that's really important for you to understand. In some cases, the vertebra can become so thin that they actually have a, like a little compression fracture on them as well. That's important for you to note as well. If you've had x-rays and you've got that, that issue, Schulman's disease, which is something that can occur in the middle thoracic spine as well, can create that excessive kyphosis as well. So there's a lot of causes. But the most common cause is what we're going to discuss tonight. And it's a massive imbalance in your chest muscles versus your rhomboids or your back muscles. Okay, so imagine for a moment that M is a housewife She's not. But imagine that she is and she's spending heaps of... <laughs> eh? Yes, among others. It's many oh, hats. one of the wear. many hats that you wear. Okay. <laughs> so imagine that she's doing plenty of cooking, leaning over, doing her cooking or vacuuming and sweeping and all that sort of thing. Or you might be a stay-at-home mum that's chasing around after a child, leaning over, doing nappies, getting a child in and out of the cot. You're using your chest all the time. Or she might be someone who is at work all the time on a computer. That's more like him. <laughs> constantly on a computer or someone very cleverly mentioned in our post for tonight's live i spend heaps of time and i contribute it for being on my phone all the time because we get tech neck so we're walking around with our hands down head down looking at our hands or at our phone or on the computer all the time all of this works the chest muscles so everything we're doing even if you're a tradie which that would be hot <laughs> af can That's i just it. say you haven't got an apprenticeship for me yeah because that would be gold just saying so i'll get a little bit flush in the face here but dribbling. if you can imagine m's using tools all the time again the same thing you're using your chest all of the time you're building the strength in your chest and let's show you what happens <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. I can imagine you in a pair of worky, worky but So this chest muscle here, the pectoral muscles, become so strong, they are attached to your shoulders. And what they do, this angle is perfect, babe, is what it does is any muscle that's tight shortens, okay? We all understand that. So it rounds the shoulders like this, nice and simple. So it becomes obvious from the front, you can see that rounded posture. I also want to mention... Please don't take this the wrong way. Don't slap me, okay? But if M had a huge chest, <laughs> sorry, baby, all right, then sometimes... I <laughs> then I breastfed and then it all disappeared. Deflated. <laughs> <laughs> That's four kids that'll do that to you. Then sometimes the weight of your chest can also be pulling your shoulders down in this orientation as well. Or just the fact that a lot of ladies become quite self-conscious of large chest and actually do that sort of in a bit of a hiding protection mechanism as well. Or you've got no chest like me and you do that because you're embarrassed because you look like a bloke. <laughs> Either way, it can cause this, this forward posture. So tight chest most likely cause brings your shoulders forward. So yep, rounded shoulder posture, I can see that. But when you turn a little bit further, you can see that as M brings her shoulders round, it increases that curve in the thoracic spine here. So that becomes quite noticeable and quite obvious. If I can spin you around a bit, this is where you might be able to see some of M's cupping from the other night. A couple of nice little cupping marks. We did a cupping on M on Tuesday night. What happens here with your shoulder blades? This is super important, okay? So your shoulder blades all linked to your shoulder girdle, okay? So this pec muscle is pulling M's shoulder around. What it's doing to her shoulder blades is it pulling them with it because they all, they're all interconnected to make the shoulder joint. And as a result of that, it's exposing all of the ribs on either side of her spine, which means that you can end up with rib pain through here because your ribs can pop out. 
So you sneeze a particular way or you reach to the back of the car to grab your, your laptop bag or whatever it is out of the back of the car and your ribs can go out. Again, because of this posture, your shoulder blades have moved around towards the front or out to the side in the front and it exposes them because the shoulder blades are designed to sit over the top of your ribs and hold them in place. So important, lots of different things that you can see can happen. Am I making you cold? You've no, no it's, yeah. it's my touch. It's chilly in Melbourne, nothing new. Oh, it's bloody crazy. <laughs> Shock and awful. All right, so getting back to this issue, we've got tight chest, bringing the shoulders forward, shoulder blades forward, exposing the ribs and creating this excessive kyphosis, which then throws M's neck, once the excessive kyphosis is there, throws her neck forward. So to rectify that, She's got to pull her neck back. This all happens without you thinking about it because, again, she's going to try and get her eye level with the horizon, which then puts you at a hugely greater risk of damaging um, cervical uh, discs in your neck. So if anybody's had any issues with the lower back, if you've got an excessive curve, then you're much more likely to blow a disc. Same in the, th in the cervical spine. When your thoracic spine is hyperkyphosed, excessive kyphosis, you end up with an excessive lordosis in your neck. This is all compensatory. You try and get your eyes level with the horizon. You more than likely will do a disc in your neck. It will take a very minimal incident for you to then go and blow a disc in your neck. So important for you to understand. So we've got to fix this problem, right? Fix it, so, Dr. Ken. This is tight. You've got to stop doing this. Sorry, just relax I'm not now. sure what you want me to do. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was really uncomfortable. I like when you do that. That's good. So we've got to work on... The tight chest here, we're going to show you how to stretch that chest, super, super important. But we've also got to work on strengthening the rhomboid muscles at the back because when they're strong, they pull your shoulder blades together, which you can see from the back. Now relax them sideways. They pull your shoulder blades together and bring your posture back into the correct orientation, which decreases, sorry, Insta's kind of just missing you slightly, which decreases that excessive curve in that thoracic spine. So folks, if you guys are throwing questions out at me, we will get to them at the end. I just want to get through this part so that those who've jumped on that want to understand this condition can really understand what we're focusing on. So our focus here is to stretch the chest because it's too tight. It is literally too strong compared to the muscles of the back. So if anyone's having a dig at your posture, it's because you've got a strong chest. You let them know, strong chest, right? And it's pulling your posture forward. Super important to understand that. So our goal is to stretch and lengthen this muscle and then to strengthen this muscle at the back. Because the last thing you want to do is spend all your days going, God, Dr. Kez said don't slouch like this. So I've got to keep doing this all the time. You don't want to have to think about it. You want your body to automatically be in that position without you having to think about it at all. One more thing before we take you through these exercises and stretches, I want to highlight to you. When you have an excessive rounding of your shoulders, so the excessive kyphosis causing this rounding of the shoulders, you are much more likely to experience is issues down into your hand, particularly that tingling and numbness feeling that you can get when you go to sleep at night time. Really nasty. Some people, even when they're driving the car, end up having to drop an arm because they end up with pins and needles. Now, what that is, it's called thoracic outlet syndrome, all part of this complex, because when your shoulders are rounded like that, all the vessels and the nerves from your neck, from your heart that come down into your arms have to go up and under your armpit. That's where they get protected. If they came across here, they get damaged all the time. Very clever design. So they go underneath your armpit and then they come down and through your arm to feed your arm with nerve supply and blood supply. Makes sense, right? But when you're rounding your shoulders like that, they get compressed and pinched under here, which is why you can end up with pins and needles and tingling or other conditions in your elbow and wrist, etc. Carpal tunnel, one that's coming to you next week as well, because it can be contributed to by this thoracic outlet issue. Okay, so that's something else to be mindful of. All right, now let's get into it. So what we're going to do first of all, I'm going to grab a ball. Babe, do you want to grab your ball? Yep. We've got a spiky ball here. We've recommended spiky balls to you guys a lot of times before, under your feet, Love. what have you. Love really, it. really good way to help increase the blood flow and to help start to move the tightness in your chest. I was rolling on it before, before we, uh, we oh, my chest is so sore from our body pump workout this morning. Oh, nasty. All right, so this ball, we love the spiky ball. So if you've got a ball at home that doesn't have spikes or one that does, please choose the one that does. Really important for this. They're really firm, these balls, which are great when you stand on you them. Can't you can't push them. them. But they're not the ones that look like a, a sea urchin, which have got like 
lots of little tiny spikes. We don't want to pierce your skin. So we just want to bit of gift. increase your blood flow with this ball. Now, this is one of the times where instead of sitting on or standing on the ball, we're actually going to use our hand to, to be the other compressing factor on this to be able to run through this area. Key here, when it's tight, yes, please. When it's tight, you will like find it's quite tender. Like mine job. is yelped today because we just did a workout this morning. Oh, no, because I'm not crying. <laughs> so make sure that you're getting the muscle right in and towards the shoulder there. You don't need to come right onto the breastbone because there's no muscle there. But bring it right over and across and sort of up and near the armpit as well because that is where this whole thing, it kind of fans out like this, this muscle. The pec muscle is quite... Uh, orientated in quite a way yeah. this is my favorite part <laughs> like this which is important to understand because when we do the stretching you need to know that these fibers move in different orientations so you can't just do one stretch to be able to make sure that you get the stretch in this like area you shower. need to stretch in different uh, orientations which we're going to show you in just a second so spiky ball rubbing on here is a great way to increase the blood flow so to be able to make sure that you're getting the looseness in the muscle that you need this is a really good way to start. The second best way to do this, other than having a treatment where someone's going to massage you or pop a needle or a cup on, is to do a stretch. Next step, heading over to a doorway. Find yourself a doorway. We're going to make a makeshift doorway over here. Here's one we prepared Here's earlier. Here's <laughs> one M prepared earlier. All right, so the reason that we do this in a doorway is because we can do both at once. So we're very busy people. We can't just do one at a time, which you can, I guess, on a bookshelf or what have you. But just to get a really good stretch on it, you can bring yourself up. Sometimes so, I do it in the car, but really, yeah, it's a bit one side. So if I'm driving and I'm at the lights, I'll yeah, do it on the passenger. Yep. Or like, you know. Put my arm behind the headrest. Yeah, see, she used to do that when I was driving. I thought she was actually giving me a hug, but then I realised she was just stretching. But anyway, that's okay. That's right. Hug me later. <laughs> or not. All right, so what I love about the doorway is that you can align... Sorry, bud. That you can align your forearm along the line of a door. So normally it's just a normal doorway. This happens to be a sliding door, but that's okay. Um, so that you've got a nice grip on there. You're not sort of twisting your arm and it's only got your hand or what have you. You've got a nice grip. And then you're leaning your whole body forward. All right. This is what we call the T pose. If you can imagine there, M looks a little bit like a T. To get some of the other orientations of the fibres, we're going to get you to put your arms up. Please don't let those doors slide out on you. <laughs> This is like a Y pose. And again, we're getting the fibers that are running down here before they were more across. So That's again, good. same thing, really let your body weight stretch forward on that. You can and feel then, it, it feels great. And then to great. get the fibers that run the opposite direction or orientation down this way, we just grab a hold of the door. Make sure that doesn't slide on you. I'm just gonna move the camera forward a little bit. Hold on to it like that and then lean forward and you're getting a different orientation stretch. Now, when you do these stretches, you should not only feel it through the muscles, depending on which orientation you're doing, the Y, T or the X, but you will also feel it pull through here. And that's where this pectoral muscle attaches to your arm. And that's why you're feeling it stretch through here as well. So it's perfectly okay to feel it here and through your arm as well. Okay, so that is going to help relieve the tension and tightness in this muscle. Roll, stretch, chirofix. All right, we got our power fix. It's around somewhere. Uh, oh, do we that? Where is it? Uh, here's one we here's prepared one. earlier. I prepared earlier. Excellent. <laughs> so, Chirofix, obviously, Chirofix has got not only anti inflammatory capacity in it, it's also got magnesium. So, magnesium is brilliant for relieving muscle tightness. Were you going to do the like. I was <laughs> just like, I was going to put it on my chest, but then I realized it was wearing like a high top. Yeah, that won't That's work. That's not going to work. I thought you were going to. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. Because yeah. normally my chest is a bit lower. It's hard to get into yeah. it. All right, so put it on the relevant area. You can rub it on your knees, which would be good for your knees, but not so good for your pecs, just saying. All right, so get the Chirofix on after you've done this. So give it a good stretch, roll with the ball, and then go and pop your Chirofix on it. When we stretch, sorry to inform you, but we do do a little bit of micro damage to the muscle, and therefore this will help to repair that. And as I said, the magnesium inside the, the Chirofix it will help you to help relieve the tension in the muscles. Magnesium is required to help release the muscle contraction that is there. So if you've got cramps, tightness in muscles, 
Chirofix releases all of that. All right, brilliant. Now, we've stretched this, the tight bit. Now, we need to work on the muscles of the back because as loose as this is, it will hold us in a little bit better posture, but ultimately, we need those rhomboids, the muscles in between your spine and your shoulder blade to activate to hold us in that upright posture. So then everybody knows that I've got no chest. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Do you want to do it? Uh, it's going to be a little bit. It's a little bit difficult. So I normally recommend that this is done sitting on your bottom. So do you want to do it? And I'll just tilt this down with you. Yep. Sounds good. Don't he? Yeah, it's perfect. I'm just going to tilt the camera down. Sorry, folks. Oh, there's lots of love hearts. Thank you. Oh God, that looks horrid when I get up close. <laughs> Sorry, folks, that was a scary sight even for me. All right, on your bottom, please. Oh, this way? Perfect, that's good. Yes, you're all in the camera. So, oh, no, you just moved out of the camera. Come down with me. I don't want to be on my own. I, I can't hold and oh. do it at the same time. I'm okay. talking. I'm okay. Not, I'm not leaving you. So we're <laughs> going to wrap the – M's got the resistance band uh, tubing rather than the band. The band oh, – I'm nervous about them because they snap. The bands, but yeah, do you want to have those thicker ones snap in the middle of the class? Maybe. Yeah, when she says the flat ones, as we're talking about, they do snap, yeah. so just be careful of those. These tubing, they don't snap, they're good. So, wrap it around your feet, please. All right, now the key here, I, I am going to see if I can put this down because I feel like I want to touch Em's body. I know that I always say that I want to do that, but I think it's important for me to, yeah, okay, that's pretty good. I'm just going to tilt the camera down. Sorry, folks, technical issues, I'm not very good at this stuff. That's okay. Sorry, Insta. I think I just made everybody seasick. All right. So the aim of this isn't so much worrying about what's happening here. The key is what's happening in M's back. Now, a resistance band like this, particularly for someone with guns like this, super, super too easy for your muscles of your biceps, okay? We're not working your bicep. We're working the muscles of the back. So imagine for a moment that someone's got their hand in the middle of your back and you're trying to pinch their hand between your shoulder blades and you're doing it by pulling on the resistance band. So try and squeeze the shoulder blades. Once you've got it to that point, try and force your shoulder blades down and into your back pocket. So together and down, really important. Hold that for 10 seconds, then relax, and then do 10 of them. Pinch the shoulder blade and then down, 10 seconds, and then release and do 10 of them. So what we need to make sure that you understand is it's really important the order that you do this. I want you to do your stretch, your ball, and your chiro fix before you go and do this, okay? If your chest is tight, you're not gonna get anywhere near as much out. We have, sorry, we had a glitch with Facebook. We're back, we're back, sorry about that. What I was saying is it's really important to make sure you stretch your chest out before you do this. You're not gonna get as much out of the work with your resistance band. Now, we're going to show you an alternative to the resistance band. I just find it, a lot of people have got the resistance tubing or the resistance bands. Not as many people have weights, but you know what? Everyone's got a milk container or a tin of soup or whatever in their, in their uh, pantry or what have you. Hopefully you don't have the milk in your pantry because it would go off. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say, something heavy that you can use. So we'll show you an alternative to use if you've got hand weights or if you've got something like a tin of soup that you can use. All right, ditch the band. Over here, beautiful. Oh, gone. All right, we're just going to move over to our, um, you know, workout studio. No, I'm just kidding. No workout studio here. This is just where the kids hang their school bags. Clearly, we don't have children or else this would be full. Just saying. All right, so we're going to do a... I'll get you to face this way. So you stand where I was, please. Ooh, technical issues here. Sorry about that. We're going to get this knee up and onto... Knee, knee. I can follow instructions. <laughs> she's, she's, she's brilliant, my wife. If I told her what I was doing, I said, she's, lean over and do a row. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. All right, so we're just trying to get M's back a little bit parallel with the floor would be ideal. And then again, this weight would be way too easy for M to do with, well, actually for her back as well because she's very strong, but um, for her bicep, it's about trying to pinch the shoulder blades together. So when you're doing it, you're not just bringing it up straight, you're sort of bringing it out a little bit as well. So go for it, babe, up and out, pinching the shoulder blade together. The key here is the pinch at the end. And again, up and release. So regardless of whether you're using a tin of soup, two litre milk container, whatever you're using, or your resistance band, please make sure you stretch the chest first. 
and then work on the rhomboids here, okay? So this is critically important. We're trying to rectify this posture, so regardless of what it is that's caused this issue, even if you've got compression fractures, whoop, sorry, in your thoracic spine, so if you've got an elderly mum, for example, who has already been diagnosed with either Schulman's disease or osteoarthritis of the thoracic spine or any type of compression fracture, this is safe to do, okay? This is perfectly safe to do once the acute issue is gone. So if it's a fracture of some sort, obviously you wait for healing, but then after that, this is perfectly safe for them to do. And you just start with a light weight, something nice and light that they can use. Little one kilo hand weights are fantastic if somebody is elderly doing this. And this is a great way to be able to rectify the tension in this area of your back, be able to strengthen it up so that no longer does the chest override that rhomboid muscle at the back, you're actually actively doing something. Now, what you really need to think about, if you guys are actually at a gym, a lot of people are out there sort of doing a lot of work in a gym now that things are back open again, it's important not to do too much work on your chest muscles in comparison to the muscles of your back. There's lots of machines at the gym that you can do weight exercises with, or you can do free weights like big barbells and being able to do rows leaning forward a little bit like what Em was doing. But you need to do more of those in comparison to here because the reality is each day you're using your chest way more than you would ever use your back. So you need to balance yourself out and make sure that you do lots of stretching of your chest with minimal chest stuff and lots of work on the muscles of your back if you've got this postural issue that we're referring to. Super important. It's about getting balance. All right, really, really important. Now, Em and I are gonna go and take a seat over here. One of the things we haven't mentioned so far, and I don't wanna harp on this too long, but there is um, a condition where you can develop a fat pad on the back of your uh, neck, uh, dorsocervical fat pad, they call it. Um, it is why well, people call it a, a buffalo hump. It's not a very nice name for people to say, but um, rectifying this postural issue will really assist with that being as obvious as it is. And you can use the ultrasound. We're going to just head over here to actually assist with um, eradicating that. And we're just going to talk about that for a sec and then take your questions because we haven't been able to check them as we go. Jeez, babe, look at all your dirty clothes. Look at that <laughs> That's what happens when I undress on a lot. That's right. I chucked them all. That was all my fault. <laughs> what if you do seated rows in a workout? Do you still need to do after that after stretching your chest after a workout? If you've got this condition and you're specifically trying to rebalance, cat, I would, but certainly understand that when we tend to do a workout at the gym, we tend to do dynamic type stretching rather than static stretching and then move into static stretching afterwards. I would still recommend you do it in that order rather than stretch your chest and then go and do the workout. It's different when we're trying to correct a posture like this. If it's part of your workout, I'm happy for you to do a dynamic stretch, dynamic meaning that you're sort of moving your body around rather than static stand and hold type stretching, and then do your workout. It's important to do either a movement stretch and then get into your workout, or do just do your workout and then do a dynamic, a um, static stretch afterwards, okay? So yes, it is different if you're doing it in a gym workout. All right, I nearly flicked myself in the foot. Well, that could be entertaining. Let's get on to that. I was, gonna say, I was just going to say that you could do it seated if you had trouble getting on the floor. Yeah, maybe don't if you're going to hit yourself in the face. <laughs> I wasn't All right, quite prepared. So, with the ultrasound, we've spoken a lot about the use of the ultrasound on conditions like frozen shoulder, tennis elbow, trochanteric bursitis, painful, this, that, and the other, discs, all that sort of stuff. We suggest that you put it on the pulsed setting. If you're going to use it to try and Basically, I like to think of it as exploding your fat cells because that's what it does. High frequency sound waves, boom, um, allows your body to then get in there and actually get rid of the fat inside the cell because it literally bursts the fat cells, not, well, kind of literally, but within the cell itself. Um, you leave it on the continuous high setting. Okay, so it's different to what we've been talking about. Nine times out of 10 with the device, we're putting it on the pulse setting. Um, but when we're wanting to deeply heat a, a joint, like an arthritic joint or something like that, I recommend that we alternate between a continuous setting and a pulsed setting. So when I say alternate, you do one one day, the next day you would do the other. Um, but in this particular condition, using it on that fat cell, air, that fat pad area, you would only need to use it on that continuous high setting. You gotta keep moving it just like you normally do with the ultrasound, but that can help get rid of fat cells. I know, right? So now everybody's gonna wanna buy the bulk gel and they're gonna do this stuff all over their fat bits on their body. 
It's not what I'm referring to, but feel free to do so because that's what they can do. Quick, they can put it on my butt. They can ex <laughs> explode fat cells, so just saying. And apologies if you all jump on there and buy one tonight because um, we haven't got very many left. Apologies about that. There's more coming, just let me know. All right, now, one of the things that I want to make sure that I do is touch base with everybody's questions that they've asked. Can I get you to do me a huge favour? Please don't think I'm being rude by not having answered them so for Facebook. Facebook is struggling. Oh, Sorry, back. Facebook, back. you're back. <laughs> um, can you please throw your questions? Trina, hello. Thank you for saying hi. I was hoping you'd say hi to us. Um, please whack your questions in now and we'll start answering them because to flick back will take me forever. How long will it take for your body to adjust to the postural changes, Trina? Is that what you're asking? Um, it does take a bit of time because keep in mind you've probably de been developing this for years. So, But if you work on it quite heavily, if you were to do this two times a day, stretching your chest and working on the muscles of your back, within three or four weeks you will start to notice a postural change. If it's because you've got pain in your ribs or issues with your hand, you'll notice a change even sooner than that, definitely. Hey, Need more gel. Yeah, Ella, it's, they're on now. The yep. large ones are on. It's freezing. Yeah, sorry, Jen, I don't know what's happening. Something's going on with the internet. I think, hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for saying hi. All right. Yes. Okay, Trina. So that's it. Hopefully answered your question. So yeah, it, it won't take long posturally to get it so that it's second nature to your body. It takes a little bit of time to retrain your body because it's been training like this for years. But certainly the symptoms of, you know, headaches or thoracic outlets, so the, the tingling in your hands, pain in your ribs, that should rectify quite quickly. So you'll be able to notice that really quickly. How long do you use the ultrasound for? Depending on the size of the fat pad, if it's a large fat pad of that long, you'd probably be there for about 10 minutes, Jen. So remember in the um, the manual it says, the can I just see the, the, can you just grab the device out for me? We ask you to use the size of the head of the device over the area that you're trying to get rid of. So if I was to do an area the size of my hand, I'd count how many times the device would fit into my hand multiply it by two. So two minutes per head, one, two, three, four, five, six, that would be 12 minutes, all right? How much is the ultrasound gel? Oh God, Jodie, I have no idea. The gel, the 250 gel? Yeah, I presume that's what we're talking about. The, oh, 18 the there is a small gel that comes with the, the um, ultrasound device when you purchase it, sorry, in case that it's, I got, I was just being smart, joking around about the fact that people would want to get rid of all their fat cells. So there is a larger gel bottle that comes with it for when you run out or if you're using it heaps. Um, Oh, thanks, Jen. Appreciate that. Rhea is 66. Can we fix her? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it can and does explode the fat cells. I used to work in ultrasonic devices on ladies and men and myself, and it does work. Fat cavitation. That is exactly what it's called. Cat, I'm dying to know what you do. That's really cool. Thanks, Cat. Thanks for that. That was awesome. I'm going to give you a big love heart. That was so cool. Thank you. All right, so come on, folks. Shoot me your questions because you possibly asked questions during that explanation that I didn't get to see. So apologies about that. And I would like to make sure that I cover everybody's questions because it's important to be heard, I think. How much is the ultrasound, please? I need to get one. Righto, babe, that's your question. 189 There you go. With free shipping. Yes, Lynette, you can certainly send that. Read up, Kez. Oh, do I have to go back to the other things? Can't you just add, add, put the questions in again? Because otherwise then I, I there's all the new ones that come through that I don't see. Come on, Julie, send me a question. Or is it a really long one and you can't be bothered retyping it? Typing it. Can it help with scoliosis, the feely curved lower back and hunched over shoulders? Okay, so Maria, scoliosis is, is a curve the other way in your spine, so side to side rather than front to back. Very specific exercises need to be done for that. Very different to what we're talking about at the moment. So yeah, sorry. This is specifically for a curve sort of from the front to the back of your body rather than from side to side in your body. Uh, doing the exercise in the in the doorway has been, is hurting your lower back. Ella, have you been doing the stretches from the lower back live that we did? It sounds like you might need to stretch your lower back if you're getting discomfort leaning in like that. Back braces for posture correction, a good compliment. Uh, 
I'm not a fan, Kylie, because I feel like braces take away the natural ability of your body to support itself. So your body becomes a bit lazy, to be honest. And then when you take the brace away, it, it doesn't know what to do with itself. So I'm not a fan of the braces, to be completely honest with you. If you're in really bad pain and the only way you can get pain rectified is to be in a brace, yep, do it for a short period of time, but then spend time out of the brace doing these exercises to try and build up the strength. Okay, the questions are coming in so thick and fast. I've got to stop talking. <laughs> Kyra, uh, Joel, by the truckload. Yeah, totally hearing you. M bathes in ours all the I time. Do. <laughs> I can't live without. Kyra fix and heat of eight. I can't live without. Hindle says she's broken this week. Not sure we have enough time to fix. Yeah, we will. End up with round shoulders from being a chronic asthmatic as a child. Yes. Oh, and the accessory muscles of respiration, which are basically assisting you to force your air out because it's not happening naturally for you, can really make this condition a whole lot worse. A lot of stretching in the neck scalenes that need to be done to rectify that problem as well. <laughs> Ella says, this is for, you, for Rhea. <laughs> okay, I was that for her lower back. Okay, Rhea needs to do the stretching in her lower back then, Ella. Um, I cycle and get stiff, stiff neck and round shoulders. Yeah, sure, those stretches will help. Mm. Yeah, that they will, certainly will, Leanne. Uh, really important to have a look at the live that we did on the neck stretches, the one where Stretch licked M's face, which was absolutely hilarious. But that will really make a difference for you as well. That leaning forward posture of a cyclist really tightens up the neck muscles, so a stretch there would be really helpful. Hey, Kylie! How many sets of 10 for the seated rows? So just do 10 of them. That's fine. Holding them for 10 and do 10 of them. Like I said, the more often you can do these exercises, the faster you will recover your posture. It will rectify a whole lot faster the, the more often you do it. Dequivanes tenosynovitis. Is that the chirofix? Yes to Dequivanes. Definitely. These exercises, are you asking whether they will help with Dequivanes? Uh, Dequivanes is a condition down here in the lower arm for those of you who don't know what it is. Particularly aggravated any time you bend your... Oh, you can't see my hand. When you bend your hand down like this, it shoots a shocking pain down there. Uh, there are other things that would rectify that condition more so than, than correcting the upper posture of here. Um, elbow and wrist subluxations can really aggravate that condition, but Chirofix is a definite for that, and the ultrasound would be exceptionally good for that. Really, really good. A um, lot of problems with aching in the middle of shoulder blades. Lynette, that comes from the shoulder blades being too far forward in this exact condition that we're talking about, and it definitely aggravates that mid-shoulder blade problem. So get, get those rhomboid muscles firing, mate, and that'll make the world a difference. Uh, Lindell, tradey and lifted heavy weights. Okay, so Lindell, you've just got to make sure that you get your posture right from a strength perspective. So as a tradey and lifting heavy weights, you'll be super strong in your chest, and not in your back as much. So it's not so much a, you know, just because you're sitting at a desk or because you're running around cleaning the house or whatever. It can be an imbalance from a super strong person at the gym. Like we went out to dinner tonight and, and the guy that was serving pizzas obviously does a lot of chest work at the gym, but his posture is rounded as a result. Too much chest work, not enough work, work on the muscles of the back. I hope he's not watching because that would be embarrassing. But anyway. Well, Maybe saying, he needs to watch. Being round, you know? <laughs> I don't want to insult the poor guy. Been round shouldered since he was since you were a kid. Yeah, it's it's a common common issue. So this is now's the time to rectify this issue. Yeah, uh, stretch your shoulders back in the pool using a pool noodle behind under my arms. Yeah, yeah that's a good one, yeah. Tracy. Yeah, really good. Wearing a nail bag at work. Think this. Oh yeah, absolutely. That end. This is going to sound a little bit off to the side from a a, a nail bag, but I had a police officer come into the clinic and I put on his. Um, well, kit. the kit, whatever you call it, the belt and the gun. Well, the gun wasn't actually in it. Uh, and far out, heavy as, like ridiculously heavy. And then you see... I bet you looked hot though. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but then you see news things of them chasing after people with all this kit on. You think, how? Because it'd be like having a toddler on your back. It was so heavy. <laughs> no wonder they need a bike for the big team. Yeah, well, no wonder they need, yeah, back adjustments. And running all with all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, ridiculously yeah. heavy. Heady so ass. heavy. But, yeah. yeah, certainly, especially if you've got your, your um, nail gun and what have you hanging off your, yeah, nothing like a female tradie. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, super hot, I've got to say. Yeah, super hot. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I'm starting to go a little bit. I'm, start, I'm starting to go a little bit red. <laughs> Where is my tool belt? Yeah, put that on. All right. <laughs> All right, are there any more questions regarding this Dowager's hump or the excessive kyphosis that we can help you out with? Any questions on, you know, how to do them? Have we explained it well enough for you to understand? I don't want anyone to cause themselves any harm. 
Stretch is so bored he's not even joining us on the live. He's like out cold. <laughs> like, no, this is not interesting. Yes, boobs, back, shoulders. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. We've all got them. Well, I don't. I don't have any boobs, but I've got back and shoulders. Oh, I hated having big boobs. It was awful. Yeah, sadness. Wow. I never had that issue. Oh, you can't get close to fit. Anyway, that's not alive. I'm pretty sure that <laughs> even when my milk came into the fullest extent, I think I was still only a C cup. But oh, anywho, God, I would never have someone out coming around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome, Kat. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Will the acupressure mat help? Yeah, look, it absolutely does. One last thing that I do want to touch base on now that we've sort of clarified, I think everyone's pretty happy with the stretches and the exercises of what we need to do. One thing I want to touch base on is if you do have this condition, there's a couple of things that I want to... <laughs> Kylie says, yes, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the boob thing I'm presuming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so one of the things I do want to touch base on is sleeping posture. So if you've got a dowager's hump, let's talk about what can really cause you damage when you're sleeping. And one thing is laying on your back with a pillow that's way too big for you. So can you imagine just for a moment, do you want to just like maybe turn sideways for a bit? So if you can, here's my pillow I prepared earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can imagine M having an excessive curve, just sit up for me, beautiful. So imagine if M's got an excessive curve and then I go and put a pillow behind her head that is also excessive, you can see that it's actually accentu Oops, sorry, baby. <laughs> it's actually accentuating the curve even more. So you, you're aggravating that condition. I'm not saying sleeping on your back is a problem, but if you've got a pillow that's pushing your head too far forward, it's actually going to make it worse. The other thing to note as well, if you've got a soft mattress, laying on your you back look like this. will divot into the mattress so easily when you've got a soft mattress that it will also accentuate the curve of your back. That's really bad. I'm going to have to give an adjustment <laughs> He tonight. falls asleep on the couch and then just like, oh, my God, wakes up and goes, where's Dr. Keys? <laughs> I can't move. Sorry, Julie. No, I haven't been able to see your question. Give it to us again, mate. I've seen that obviously you can't see my question, but I haven't seen your question, so... I have I've described you to a T... Yeah, yep, totally understand. So laying on your back's a bit of a killer. If you've got a correct pillow, so the pillows that we recommend have got a contour to them. The contour, do you want to go and grab your pillow? My pillow. Yep. Actually, don't grab yours. It's probably got dribble on it. Can you I'll grab, grab mine? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. She's going to hit me for that later. So if you've got a contoured pillow, ideally your head will sit in a more correct posture, which will bring your, your neck as well as your thoracic spine back into the correct posture. If you're sleeping on your side, that's okay as well. Just be mindful not to grab... Is this my pillow? It's yours. Excellent. Just be mindful <laughs> when you sleep not to grab your pillow and tuck your head like this forward. It's probably a bit hard to see because of what I'm doing, but you know, I'm not exactly in a bed here, but is that doing this, a lot of people sort of tuck themselves into a fetal position and that will make your curve worse, okay? Because you're tucking yourself, accentuating that curve. So if you're gonna lay on your side, lay nice and straight so your back is nice and straight, Feel free to pop a pillow between your legs to keep your whole spine straight, and that is also a good posture. But if you've got a nice firm mattress, laying on your back with a pillow that is contoured like this, back to my wife. Yep, I don't need to be in. So if you can imagine here, sideways for me, beautiful. As in, yes, face that way so that we can. So if you can imagine here that when the when she's on the bed here, the contour is going to support her head rather than sorry, babe, I'm just going to make it worse for a bit. If it's too high. It's pulling her head forward, which is making that curve a whole lot worse. Really hard to see. Shocking demonstration, but I'm hoping everyone knows, you can like you know, those before. times where you sit on your bed and you can't be bothered moving all the pillows. No, and you fall asleep, and you just know oh, you're fine. Like, oh, I'm comfortable. It's probably not the best posture, but yeah. Yeah, but if you've got a condition like this, you've got to be super yeah. mindful of it. Make sure you select the best posture. And if you're anywhere near in Melbourne or Victoria, in fact, I think they've got places in other states. We have uh, built a relationship with a guy from Regal Sleep Solutions. Solutions. I always get it wrong. Yep. Uh, and they are brilliant at being able to assess your, your spine, your posture, what your body needs, and fitting a mattress to you. Absolutely brilliant. Best yep. way to get a mattress for you. None of this Book spend a hard gap, two seconds on lying one. on a yeah, mattress in a, in a warehouse and, and think that, oh, you know, yeah, that'll be great for when I get it home. These guys actually look at your posture. I'm a big, big fan of the zoned mattresses. 
that take the heavier parts of your body, like your shoulders and your hips, and the, the foam in those areas is different, which then means when they you sink further in that area, you end up with a dead straight spine. So you're getting complete rest and relaxation of all of your muscles, which is what you're supposed to do when you sleep. I am a really big fan of those mattresses rather than the ones that are one size fits all or firm, soft. Yeah, I'm not a fan. As a Cairo, I don't think that they support your body enough. So I'll, we might be able to put a link in, can we, for yeah. Regal? So if you, there's a few Regals around, but if you put uh, Dr. Kez Cairo Lab in the bottom, you'll get a discount. So that's always nice too. All right, um, Trina. Yes, that's me too. Sometimes I sleep flat without a pillow. And that feels better. Yeah, just be careful of doing that for other purposes because it will flatten your neck out and you can end up with a military neck, so a straight neck rather than a lordotic neck, which you don't want that either. I know, you can go either way. It's no good. Back ordered ultrasound, chirofix and bath salt will help. Yes, absolutely. So if you're talking about this particular condition, yeah, the ultrasound and the chirofix, absolutely. Bath soak is brilliant, especially if you've got an elderly mum who is suffering from the calcium deficiency condition, osteoporosis that we spoke about at the beginning that's generated this problem in the first place. Soul Soak is brilliant at being able to help remineralize your body, including calcium. So really, really good. Good, good, good. And of course, it's got tons of magnesium in it, peeps. So it's really good for releasing those muscles. That smells great. That too. <laughs> and it will sleep. put you to sleep. If you're going for, well, if you're on the relax, the um, yeah. recover is great for inflammation and uh, cleaning your sinuses, really. But the, the relax, oh, man, it'll knock you out cold. Oh, I have the best night's sleep after being in that. Memory foam mattress in your pillows. Yep. It just depends on what's happening underneath the memory foam, Ella. Um, I do love the old memory foam. I find it quite comfortable to sleep on. But a couple of things you've got to consider. As we get older and we start to go through change of life, you've got to be a bit careful about what type of foam you're sleeping on for being able to breathability and being able to help... Uh, your body to remain cool and the second thing is if again if it's the whole thing's standard one size or one firmness you haven't got that zoning to be able to keep your body nice and straight so any type of issue like an excessive kyphosis like this or a scoliotic curve that someone mentioned before will be made worse or your body will fall into that posture overnight which then makes it worse because you like it not only during the day but also at night and will actually make it worse uh, for you because you're sleeping in that position as well. So ideally, if you can get a zone mattress, they are the best. Roll over, another thing to correct. Yeah, sorry. Don't sleep on your tummy either. If, I haven't mentioned sleeping on your tummy because I it's my pet hate because your spine's all twisted when you do it. Not good. I've got one of those hump things at the back of my neck and didn't realise it had a name and or could be fixed. Well, Karen, hopefully you got a chance to see the little stretches and exercises we suggested. Oh, God, poor Penny feels like she's doing everything wrong. No, please don't think of that. Just think about some learning opportunities. Yeah, and that say, you... Unless you know what you can fix now. That was the second half of my message. I'm sorry, Julie. I feel like I'm annoying you by not being able to get all your messages. Is anybody else able to maybe copy Je Julie's message and send it? It just appears that I'm not getting all of her messages. Hydro def definitely would help. Keep in mind that with um, any type of hydro work, half the time your upper half of the body is, is out of the water. But... Um, really to be able to get a good stretch of your pectoral muscles, other than the um, comment that I can't remember who it was that said getting the noodle and stretching your arms back. There's not a, a great way to stretch your chest in the pool. We, you need sort of something to hold on to to be able to do it. So you can certainly hang on to the edge of the pool and give it a big stretch. But um, inside the, the hydro pool, I think uh, I'm a big fan of that for the lower part of the body, but maybe not so much for this, this particular part um, that we're trying to help at the moment. Sleep on your side, it hurts. I turn like a rotisserie. Oh, yeah. Is that this condition, Jenny, or is it a lower back issue that you got that causing you issues? There's a message here. I... Yeah, that sounds like, um, Tracy, sounds like you might need to get into a soul soak and start to release all of the muscles in your body. It sounds like you're in a like literally knit, knotted and twisted state. So get into a soul so soak bath. It has over 80 essential elements and minerals that will really be able to help release all of that tightness in your body. Super, super good idea. And, of course, Cairo fix in those spots that are particularly nasty. That would be ideal. And and particularly if you do it in, in a relaxed bath because you'll sleep like an absolute And then go straight to bed. Yeah. We'll um, post it, Julie, so you split, can watch it later. Split electric beds. Yeah, we will. Yep, we certainly will. And Jenny, hips and knees. Uh, hips and knees are the pain. All right, the key with the hips and your knees when you're sleeping, Hides, don't do that, darling, is um, 
to make sure that you've got something between your knees because us ladies, we have wide hips. And as a result of that, when we go to lay down, we have our knees sort of fall to the bed. And as a result of that, you get pull on your hips and your lower back. So if you can put something in between your knees, it keeps you more even. And as a result, it takes pressure off your hips, pressure off your back, and hopefully off your knees as well. When you lie, I really don't think I'd be able to mimic this with M and the chair that we're on. But next time we do something that's laying on our, can you remind me? I'll show you what I mean, Jenny, because I think it is important to understand that. It really is. When you've got a wide base in your hips and then your knees come together and, and land on the mattress, there's a huge pull on the upper part of your body, your, your glute med, your glute min, your TFL muscle, your ITB, all of that gets stretched otherwise. So if we put a pillow between our legs, it's not on tension anymore. So you're not pulling on your hip, you're not pulling on your trochanteric bursa, you're not pulling on your knee and you're not pulling on your lower back. So get a pillow between your knees. Really, really good. Uh, Kim saying, lower back kills me and has been for years. Should I see more than a chiropractor? Well, more than a chiro. Are you already seeing a chiro, Kim? I'm not really sure what that question is. Um... I think Kyra is a great. There's particularly one in Watsonia that I'm a bit of a fan of. <laughs> I wouldn't really call her a Kyra though. No, you're a one-stop shop. She's a bit of a jack of all trades, so it's a bit. It's hard. Like the, there's Kyros and there's Kyros. We're all different in what we do, and you might find that, um, yeah, if you've been to see one and you're not getting a result, maybe try another one, or an osteo, because I'm a bit of a fan of osteo. What we do is very similar to osteo in our clinical practice. Uh, when I get my order, I'll just message you on how to use it. Sounds like a good plan, Julie. Excellent. We will help you out with that. All right. Well, hopefully I've answered your questions, folks. I can't even remember what our next live is on because, you know, I've been too busy talking about Dowager's Humps now and I can't remember what's on next. Carpal tunnel? Uh, that's coming up next week. Yes, that is definitely coming up next week. I can't remember. Anyway, that's okay. We'll catch up with you. Actually, you know what? Em and I thought we might touch base with you guys tomorrow we we felt like we might do like a little bit of a friday feels tomorrow yeah, hey like we, yeah we were a bit lonely last weekend we didn't do any lives <laughs> we did on saturday did we <laughs> <laughs> i think maybe em gets bored <laughs> with just my company no, we actually have got the kids like coming back tomorrow time. like i can't remember what day what day is so it it's gonna be busy Oh, and Heidi agrees. <laughs> she's crying. I don't know what she's crying about. But anyway, we, we're, we're probably going to jump on um, tomorrow and do a bit of a, just a chat with you guys, you know. Just be nice to just have a little bit of a chat. Oh, Elise, hello. Carpal Tunnel. Julie, next week we're going to jump on just how sh high should your pillow be? I'm, uh, yeah, straight line. So when you're looking at your spine from the side, so if I was to fit a pillow on M, I'd get it a face away from me so that I can check out her neck. And then I can make sure that her spine is perfectly straight. So if you could imagine if, if this is M, me looking at her from the side, if her pillow's too high, her neck will do this. If her pillow's too low, it will do this. So we're trying to make sure that it's nice and neutral. And the ideal with this, with the contour, is that it, it cups the neck rather than having a gap in there so that your neck has to find the pillow during the night. Really big fan of the contour pillows, I have to say. Really big fan. Thank you for our information. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Kylie says, go and see Dr. Key. She took a 45-minute drive. Totally worth it. All over. Love it. Happy one-year anniversary again. Thank you, Elise. Much appreciated. We have had a pretty good week, have we not? We have. We've been working, but we've had a pretty good week. Yeah. Uh, Ella, lovely. Ooh. Yeah, no, she's not going to like it at all. That's okay. <laughs> Is the bird okay? Yeah, she's a, he's, oh, you know why? It's dark and there's it's two. So he thinks it's bedtime. <laughs> Wait until we go in there and turn the turn TV Turn the lights on. and the TV on. It's couch time. He'll be like, ah, oh, what the heck? Thank you for asking though, Alicia. Yeah, no, Pickles is okay. He just thinks it's night time because it's completely dark out there because we don't have any of the kids tonight. Ah, Jen loves her new pillow. Stacey's coming to Melbourne in June. Totally Ooh. coming to visit. Oh, yes, Stace, I can't wait. Bring Ducky with you, will you? That'd be gold. I'm dying to meet her. All right, two or three pillows is big no-no. Oh, Karen. Oh, God, that's almost as, makes me almost as nauseous as you possibly you saying you sleep on your neck. <laughs> I sleep on your neck, sleep on your stomach, sorry. Uh, all right, awesome. Okay, folks, we're going to go and I want to get into a soul soap bath. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yep, I'm keen. All right. A noodle bowl on the side. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds really good with a bit of Netflix. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Hopefully that's helped, folks. Uh, we will do an endeavour to touch base on any questions we've missed at some stage. Um, but thanks for having us on your therapeutic journey.